What's going on guys? So I've been driving the, the Boosted RSX for a couple days now and I've noticed that I've got a little small problem when I'm selecting gears. Um, let me show you real quick. This is my gear selector down here and when I go into, I have a hard time going all the way over to the left side to go first and second. So what I'm thinking is that this the selector here, this is from the EP3, but I'm just using this as a reference. This is what selects the gears here. This thing right here. And I believe this is a little too, let me say too far down, I guess you would say it, because when you go to the to the very left for first and second gear, it pushes the spring right here, and it pushes it downward. So if I, if I bring it up a little bit more, it'll give me more room to go all the way to the first and second gear. So right now I think I'm just pretty much bottomed out and it just takes too much effort to get in the first and second. I know it's a little confusing um, but that's what I'm running into so I believe if I, I can adjust this, the height of this then I'll be fine. It'll be easier to get in the first and second. I also need to flip those tires in the rear. Um, you saw it in the last video where Oh, it's having a little bit of camber wear on the insides. I think it's about time to flip them. I am trying to go to Slammed Enough Gatlinburg. Hopefully I can make that. Um, that's one of the reasons why I need to get these tires flipped because I don't think I'll be trailering her. So I'll be driving her all the way and that's a good five, six hours. So <clears throat> that's where I'm at today. So I plan on getting that fixed, the gear selector, getting those swapped over and eventually I need an alignment because when I took the subframe off to do my transmission to fix that, uh, I think I knocked the alignment out somehow. Not sure how, but I, it's pulling to the left a little bit more than it should. So that's another time though. So I'm gonna get working on this and see see if I can fix this. All right, so I got everything disconnected for the gear selector. I got my coupling off here because it was in my way to get all these shift linkage off. Uh, so I took the shift linkage off. Those two things here, I got the four bolts that held down the gear selector, one, two, three, four. Um, and there's also another, it's right here. This also holds the gear selector in right here on the side down here. So I took that out. So now all I have to do is pull this gear selector off and it should come right off. Pry down right over here under it. Go under my clutch line. There we go. I think it's loose. So I just gotta pull this off. Might be a little trickier than I think, but there we go. It's coming up. But it's out. I'm gonna get it all the way out and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do to it. So this is what this is the EP3. This is the EP3 uh, gear selector. This is my, my stock Type S gear selector. So they're, they're really similar, the selectors down here. So this is this is the part that actually selects the gears, like first and second. So this thing will rotate forward or backwards, forward or backwards. And then to select between first and second or third and fourth, this will, you will actually, the very bottom, the very extended to the bottom, that's first and second. And then the spring, you compress it up more. The middle one is third and fourth and fifth and sixth, so on like that. So this is what I'll need to be adjusting here, this whole piece right here. Um, so I'll be loosening this, should just be loosening this nut right here, this bolt. And then I'm going to shift it down just a little bit so I'll have more room to go into first and second. Because right now when I go to try to get into first and second, I feel like I'm just stretching the cables or something like that. Like I'm just putting too much stress on the, on the cables and this whole thing in general. To go in the first and second. So if I, I believe if I bump this down a little bit more, I'll be able to get into first and second a lot easier. And same thing when I, when I went to like fifth and reverse, I can actually shift past like the reverse. So I think this is this is off a little bit. So let me adjust this, throw it back in, test it out, and see if that fixed the problem or not. All right. So I made an interesting discovery here. I took that bolt out. It's right here. I took that bolt out. And so I was going to move this whole thing and come to find out you can't do that because if you see right here, the bolt feeds through the actual whole centerpiece. So there's no way I can do that. But then when I was comparing this whole bottom half to this bottom half, I found out that 
you can see you see this opening right here that that opening is a lot longer than this opening here and that's because this is this is the six speed so you have to you have more room to travel <clears throat> to get to the, the fifth and sixth and reverse on the six speed but this is for the five speed so this this should actually work so what I'm going to do is take this whole bottom piece off swap it with this one I may even put the springs and all that because I'm not sure if the spring rates are different since this has a lot more travel room, this spring rate might be a little harder than this one. I'm not sure. Um, I'll probably just swap them all over just to be safe. So that's what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to throw it back in the car. All right, I got them both transferred over. So this is this is the this actual selector. Oh, shit. This selector is actually from the EP3. This one's the Type S, so EP3 Type S. This bottom part's EP3. This bottom part's Type S. So I just swapped the bottom parts. So now this should line up better. I should get more mobility for first and second. I shouldn't overextend past reverse in the five speed transmission I have in the car. So this should work. I should have done this from the beginning. I just didn't know because I put I just put the stock type S whole assembly in and shifted it around and it felt fine on the actual shifter itself, but I didn't do it with the actual like gear select or the gear shifter in the car. So I didn't know, but you learn as you go and this should fix my problem, so I'm gonna throw this back in and see if and verify that it it's better to go in the first and second. So let me get that done real quick. All right, now I got it all buttoned up. For the most part, I haven't put the cotter pins back in the shifter. Where I'm just gonna test it. I've got that piece down there that holds the whole selector in. Got all the four bolts up here. I don't put anything else up here yet together, but right now I'm gonna go test it. Got that in. Hopefully, fingers crossed that this will work a lot smoother than my other one. So, let's see. All right, here we go. Neutral, first. Okay, that was second. Yeah, that's a lot easier. Third, fourth, fifth. Let's see if I can get rid of the verse here. Okay. Well, this is a lot smoother. This is so much better. Because before, I had to struggle to go all the way to first and second, and I had to like wiggle it in both first and second. So now it just goes in easy for both. And then when I went to go to reverse, it was kind of hard to find reverse because this let me go all the way over even further than it does now. So it would go all the way over even more. And then when I would go to try to put it in reverse, it would just be nothing. I should be putting it in, in like an empty gear. So now it only lets me go this far and then that's reverse. So this is a lot better. It's a lot more accurate than the other one. So if you're going to swap from a 6 speed to 5 speed, you still need to keep the 5 speed gear selector for the for the transmission. So that's what I learned. This should be a lot better. Um just gotta take it for a test drive. I gotta button everything up up there first. But yeah, let me do that real quick and see how she drives. She said I was going to get for go for a test drive, but I think I'm gonna go get these back wheels over here, take it off, get them flipped. I'm going to get those done as soon as possible. So I'm going to do that first so they, they can be doing that during the day while I do some other things on the car. So I'm going to get that done, take those off, and then after I get those wheels back, then I'll take it for a test spin. So that's going to be the game plan. Brian <laughs> All right, so I got, excuse me, I got my tires flipped. As you can tell, this side's really bad. You can see just how smooth it is. That was all from camber wear. And you can see you have a little bit of the thread starting to show. So hopefully I get a little bit more life out of this one. I know I'm gonna have to change this tire soon. Um, but the inside, the inner part now is has brand new tread on it basically. So hopefully that'll, that'll last me for a little bit. So got that done. Now I just gotta pull her out, 
take her for a little test spin, make sure the the gears are shifting right. So I'm gonna show y'all, I'm gonna show y'all what it takes to get this car out of the garage and up the driveway with my front bumper on. If I, have to, if I don't have my front bumper on, I can just pull right on out. But since I have my front bumper on, and this is, driveway's kind of upward hills. I don't know if you can really tell in the video, but it's kind of upward hill. It's not too bad, but it's just enough where I have to do something extra to get the car out. So when y'all buy your house, make sure you buy a house that has a, a flat level driveway. I pulled in the test, test it, but I didn't come all the way down and pull in the garage before I bought the house. So I, I was able to pull in, so I thought I was good, but right here at this dip right here, because it, it goes down and back up, so I didn't come up to that, that dip like this, and that's where I hit my front lip. So I'm going to record what I have to do to take this car out, so let's see. This is what I have to do every time I want to pull this car out and pull it back in. So that's what I have to do. I have to use these planks, get it right where the dip's at, just so it won't bottom out and scrape and try to pull off the bottom splitter of the car. So that's what I have to go through every time. So that's how I do it. Time to take her for a test spin.
strip to open her up. It doesn't help that it's rush hour too, so. That's the best I can do. She's shifting good. She feels good. She feels a whole hell of a lot better than she did before with the other shifter, so this thing's working real good. I'm so much more happier with with this shifter than the other one. So we are done. But you're driving good. Come here. Sit. Good girl. Shake. Good girl. Lay down. Lay down. Good girl. Oh. Speak. 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 Good girl. Good girl, Mia.